a lot of time NGOs just receive money and they're not creators of wealth. So in the world you also need entities which create wealth so that entities can spend also. So uh, how the Krishnamurti Foundation in a sense brings a balance to both uh, in, a, in a different kind of a vision. Well, the vision in the Krishnamurti Foundation was uh, given by the founder, J. Krishnamurti, who said that this kind of education, which is only training individuals to take up jobs and become professionals, is uh, too limited uh, education. And Ultimately, this competitive spirit and this division in the world is destroying the whole world. And therefore, he wanted <coughs> a different kind of education to create a different kind of human being uh, who grows up with sensitivity, um, who has a holistic development of all the different aspects, physical, intellectual, uh, moral, spiritual, and emotional. Uh, so that education then must be concerned about the human being, the development of that human being as a whole, and not value him only in terms of what able, he is able to achieve for the economy. <coughs> so its aim is not economic development. That becomes a side aim. The main aim is human development. What kind of human being are we producing? Um, as part of that education, this feeling of responsibility towards the environment and towards the community around you, uh, that is what created the rural center. Uh, it's part, of, it's not separate from this education. Uh, it is not simply that one is doing charity out of uh, collecting money from rich people and trying to give it to the poor. Uh, that is not the aim of it. But as part of growing up as a community which feels responsible for the whole world and therefore also of its immediate environments, uh, you have to ask yourself what are we doing for the poor people around us or for the soil or for the ecology and one is concerned about everything. Out of that concern, the rural center was born. Uh, it's not really a replacement for the government's efforts because it's too small an effort. We cannot match the government's efforts. To educate millions of human beings is not going to be possible for the Krishnamurti Foundation or for any particular NGO. That is something that has to be done by the government. So we are not really substituting for the government, but uh, we are doing it because we feel whatever we can do um, for our environment and our mm, neighbors, we should do. And that is the right way to grow up. So the children learn that also as they grow up in the school. And it's important to grow up with that sensibility. Now, the way it is actually accomplished is that you have the <coughs> private school, boarding school, uh, where the fees are high because uh, it's not taking any aid from the government. So all the salaries of the teachers, the laboratories, the set up, the buildings, everything has to be built uh, with that money, which comes in from the fees uh, from the people. So uh, the school is self-sustaining, uh, is self-sustaining. The parents are subsidizing the school. We don't receive any government grant. But as part of the responsibility of the school for its environment, we donate a certain amount of money and also provide the organizational structure and uh, <coughs> management of the rural center there. And that in turn works for the people in the environment. But we are quite conscious of the fact that this cannot replace, or it's just a drop in the ocean uh, when it comes to what India's problems are as a whole. So I have no such illusions that we are contributing towards solving that problem. 
I'm rather doing it because <coughs> of this fellow feeling for one's neighbors. Not with a, some kind of global or millennium <laughs> aim in mind. I think that's too big a, a thing. <laughs> we are into education and we are also into uh, rural uplift. Uh, so we have a rural center. We run a small hospital as a primary health center. Uh, we also run a school for children uh, from ages uh, 5 to 15. Uh, rural children, all virtually free education and free health care. And these activities run entirely on donations. Mm. We provide part of the donation from our other institutions where uh, we get finances either from the government or uh, through the fee-paying students and so on. Uh, but at least 50% of the donations we try to get from outside and that limits the number of workers we can employ and the scale on which we can operate. Also, for example, Students uh, themselves in a school, fee-paying school, uh, can devote some time to uh, educate uh, illiterate children or even the children of uh, the class four staff who work in these institutions. Um, it would be educational both for them and beneficial for the children. So we have from time to time undertaken that kind of scheme also. Mm. Mm.